Hello, I'm Tom Davis, World Vision's Global Sector Lead for Health and Nutrition, and I'm glad Robert Kanwagi and I had this opportunity to tell you about the studies we have underway looking at COVID-19 vaccine acceptance in at least six countries. So far, we have data from Tanzania, Kenya, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and India, and are launching these studies in the, the DRC as well. We have summaries of our findings from Bangladesh and Myanmar that I can share, and today I'll share our preliminary findings from Kenya and Tanzania. The studies that World Vision and other agencies are conducting are based on barrier analysis, which is a rapid assessment formative research tool to identify the behavioral determinants associated with a particular behavior, such as mask use or vaccine acceptance. We do these studies in order to develop more effective behavior change messages and activities. BA is based on the health belief model and the theory of recent action models. And a key feature of that is that you interview uh, those doing a behavior, the doers, or intending to do a behavior, and compare their responses to those who are not, the non-doers. This allows you to look for correlations between responses and the behavior, and in this case, vaccine acceptance, so you can better identify what is driving behavioral adoption. BA has been used in more than one third of lower and middle income countries. Analysis is done with a simple spreadsheet and BA was used extens extensively during the Ebola outbreak and World Vision is now using it to study acceptance of COVID-19 vaccines, comparing responses from people that plan to get a COVID-19 vaccine with those who do not. I don't have time to give a lot more details on the methodology, but there are online presentations, um, but feel free to reach out to us as well. These are the main determinants that are explored in these studies, uh, things like perceived social norms, whether you think that people important to you approve of the behavior, but also things like perceived severity, whether you think that COVID-19 is a dangerous disease or not. We feel that using bear analysis gives practitioners a much better idea of what they need to be focusing on in terms of messages and activities to promote a behavior, especially when compared to just CAP studies or focus groups. For example, here's an example of some beliefs on acceptance of COVID-19 vaccines in Bangladesh, which we completed in December 2020. This isn't bear analysis data, but looking at this, what would you focus on if you only had this data on prevalence of beliefs, or if you heard these responses in a focus group discussion? Well, maybe you should work on those perceptions about negative side effects. A lot of people brought those up when we asked what would be a disadvantage of getting a COVID-19 vaccine. Or maybe you could promote more advantages of getting the vaccine other than just saying that it protects you from COVID. For example, talking about how children will be able to return to school once enough people are vaccinated and that people will be able to return to a normal life. Those seem to be a lot uh, on a lot of people's minds and it sounds like uh, there's some powerful motivators there. And maybe you would not work as much on talking about not getting COVID-19 vaccine as an advantage of the vaccine since more than three quarters of people already believe that or focusing on social norms since more than two thirds of people already believe that most of their family and friends will get the vaccine. Or maybe you have another favorite determinant to focus on. However, of those three checked in green, none were found uh, to be associated with accepting the vaccine. They're most likely not driving the uh, acceptance of vaccines. And of those that we rejected with the red X, not getting COVID-19 was an important driver and believing that most of my close family and friends will get the vaccines was also highly associated with being an acceptor, that is an intended doer. Instead, here are the things that are most highly associated with intending to get a COVID-19 vaccine in Bangladesh. All of these are statistically significant associations. For example, social norms, Respondents who believe that most close family and friends will get the vaccine were much more likely to say that they would get a vaccine. Respondents who said that most of their community and religious leaders wanted them to get a vaccine were also much more likely to seek the vaccine, as well as those who believed most people in general will get it. 
believing that not getting COVID-19 uh, is an advantage of the vaccine was also a very important driver. Look at perceived risk. This was also important. Non-acceptors were 6.8 times more likely to say that they were not concerned at all about getting COVID-19. Perceived access was important, as one would expect. Acceptors were 4.8 times more likely to say that they expected the vaccine to be offered within 30 minutes of their home. This is why we want to use barrier analysis more for other COVID-19 uh, behaviors, and we believe other agencies should be using this tool in addition to other tools like focus groups and key informant interviews and KPC surveys to make decisions around social and behavioral change for vaccine acceptance. Many INGOs are already using bear analysis and the tabulation and analysis can be used, uh, can be done using a simple spreadsheet, uh, which we have available. So this is an easy tool for people to use. Let's talk now about what we're finding in African countries so far using barrier analysis. This is a summary of the behavioral determinants that were most highly associated with being a COVID-19 vaccine acceptor in our Kenya barrier analysis study. That study was done in the Elgio uh, Marraquet County of Kenya in Western Kenya along uh, the Rift Valley. The most important determinants of acceptance were things like trust, perceived social norms, perceived severity of COVID-19, but there were five other determinants that were significant as well. For example, the non-acceptors, that is the non-doers, were 6.8 times more likely to say that they have no trust at all in a COVID-19 vaccine. And they were four times more likely to say that it would not be safe at all for them to get a COVID-19 vaccine. All of these are highly statistically significant. Non-acceptors were 4.6 times more likely to say that most of their close family and friends will not get a COVID-19 vaccine. Acceptors were 3.8 times more likely to say that most other community and religious leaders will want them to get a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, acceptors were more likely to say that they're, they are very likely to get it, uh, to get the vaccine if a health worker recommends it. Acceptors were 2.2 times more likely to say they'd be very serious if someone in their household got COVID-19, that is perceived severity was at play. Other important determinants that we found were things like positive consequences or advantages of getting the vaccine, perceived divine will, perceived access, perceived self-efficacy, and perceived action efficacy. And here's what we're seeing in the Sinjita and Shinyanga regions of Tanzania. As we found in the other studies, there were quite a, a number of behavioral determinants at play as well. For example, acceptors of the vaccine, that we call them the doers, were greater than 13 times more likely to say that most of their close family and friends will get a COVID-19 vaccine than the non-acceptors. Uh, acceptors were more than 10 times uh, more likely to say that most of their community leaders and religious leaders want them to get a COVID-19 vaccine. Non-acceptors were more than 10 times more likely to say that having no trust in the COVID-19 vaccines makes it difficult and uh, seven times more likely to say that they don't trust the COVID-19 vaccine at all. Uh, Non-acceptors were 9.9 .9 times more likely to say that they did not know if it'd be safe for them to get the vaccine. Non-acceptors were also greater than five times more likely to say that fear of impotency is a disadvantage of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. This is the only place that we saw that coming up in a way that was associated with, the, uh, with vaccine acceptance uh, and hesitancy. And there are other important determinants like access, perceived severity of COVID-19, perceived divine will, and perceived action efficacy. Uh, acceptors were also 1.4 times more likely to have completed college, we found. Here's what those results in Tanzania look like graphically. The green bars are the percentages of intended acceptors who gave the response, and the red bars represent the percentages of non-acceptors who gave the response. These are the same as uh, what I presented on the previous slide, but some people prefer to see this sort of relationship graphically. So if we will have this data on six countries, why do we need to do more bear analysis studies? Why not just take all of these studies and see, uh, look at what's driving it? Well, 
The main reason is that these determinants vary by country and context. You can't assume that you'll find the same determinants where you work, so we do need more data. For example, these two lists show the top determinants in two different countries in Asia, where we finished analysis. Note that there are two that are common to both, perceived social norms and access. But the others depend on the country where we did the study. And I would expect we could find very well find very different results by region of a country as well. We will eventually pull these studies together into a compendium once we have all the data in, uh, similar to what we did with the Ebola-related barrier analysis studies during that outbreak. But if you're interested in doing this sort of study in your country, please let Robert or I know as we may be able to provide some assistance and our TSO office in World Vision can provide the full training if you need that. You may be asking yourself, well, what do you do with this sort of data once you generate it? Uh, by knowing what determinants and specific responses are important, you can use that to develop both activities and messages to confront each barrier and leverage each enabler. Here are just a few examples of what can be done for several of them. For example, for perceived norms, you can help make this invisible behavior uh, and other invisible behaviors like acceptance visible by getting people to put stickers on their homes or to use a lapel pin so that people can see that the majority of people plan to get the vaccinated. We need to make the majority visible to people. Uh, if perceived access is a problem, of course, you can start getting the word out about where the vaccine will be accessible. If perceived consequences uh, or advantages of getting the vaccine are found to be important, you can do things like gathering testimonials from people who plan to get the vaccine or using essay contests. And note that I've included links which provide more information on a few of these sort of SBC activities and techniques. For perceived risk or susceptibility, you can work with the news media to disseminate more stories of people who have died or had serious cases of COVID-19, leveraging what's called the availability heuristic. And for perceived divine will, it may be helpful to work with faith leaders to help them create sermon guides or feature faith leaders who support vaccination in radio spots. So those are just a couple of ideas. Uh, but we really do hope to see more organizations using these barrier analysis studies so we can really know what is driving COVID-19 vaccines acceptance and uh, the hesitancy. I hope this presentation would be helpful to you as, your work, uh, as you work on COVID-19 vaccine demand issues. Thank you.